Hey there, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be sharing all of my favorite must-have props for your ESL Online Classroom. So if you're just getting started in the world of ESL Online teaching, and you're wondering what you need and what you don't need, then this video is for you, so stick around. In this video, I'll be talking all about props and my favorite props that I use in my online classroom. So if you're just getting started with the online teaching, you may be overwhelmed trying to figure out what props you need, what you don't need. It's really hard to know when you haven't actually started teaching yet. So I know when I first started, I made the mistake of going out and buying more things than I actually needed. I didn't really feel confident in my teaching abilities. I wasn't really sure what I was doing yet. And so I just bought more props and I thought that that would take care of things. But now that I've had more experience, I find that I don't use a lot of the props that I, that I had gotten. So I'd like to kind of help you out and share with you the props that I use the most, the ones that I would recommend. And my biggest tip is really to start small. If you're not sure, then try some things out first, start teaching first and see what you think you really need before buying things and spending a lot of money. So the first thing that I would suggest when you're just getting started is to make use of digital props and printable props. These are the cheapest that you can get and they don't take up a lot of space, so they're super easy and convenient. So as far as digital props, um, I work for both VIP Kid and iTutor Group, and I use Google Slides for VIP Kid. Now with iTutor Group, you're not allowed to use your phone, so you can't show your phone in class. And with VIP Kid, when I use Google Slides, I show them on my phone. Um, and if you're not sure about Google Slides or what they are, I'm going to talk about it in just a minute. Um, but that being said, with VIP Kid, you are able to use Manicam, which is a um, some software that you can get for your computer. It allows you to use different tools on your computer. You can have a green screen and different images and things that pop up on the screen itself. So it is really helpful. I personally don't use it because I'm not really um, into all the tech stuff and it just feels like one more thing to have and to kind of manage during the, during your class. So I just prefer not to use it, but I do make use of Google Slides with VIP Kid. So Google Slides is amazing. Um, all you have to do is download the SlideKick app and you will have access to um, using Google Slides. And so with VIP Kid, if you are a VIP Kid teacher, there is a VIP Kid Google Slides group. So once you download the, the SlideKick app, you can actually go into the VIP Kid Google Slides group and search for all kinds of rewards, props. They have something for literally every lesson. So you can find everything that you're looking for. It's really awesome. They have tons of rewards. They have teacher versus student type rewards. They have find a star. They have literally anything you could want. Um, and if you're not sure, there are lots of other videos all about Google Slides, so go ahead and check those out. Um, now that being said, you can use Google Slides on Manicam with iTutor Group if you choose to. Another cool thing with iTutor Group, if you work for them, is that they do have a toolbar at the top of the screen within each classroom where you can search for images. So that was a huge help, especially in the beginning when I didn't want to be pulling out a lot of different props for all the different lessons. Right within the classroom, if you come to a word or something that you want to explain to the students, whether they're kids or adults, you can go into the search bar and you can search for a photo and tons of pictures will come up. You can pick one and it will pop up on the screen. It's very helpful. So I would definitely recommend that. So if you try out Google Slides or the search photo function in iTutor Group, you will have pretty much everything you need to get started. You can also do printable props. So VIP Kid especially, they have a uh, resource and um, they have a resource center right within the app where you can actually download a lot of different props. So they have tons of printable props. There's also other, um, other YouTube channels and sites where you can get printable props and there's lots of them out there. You can also just do your own searches of images and print those things out, laminate them, whatever you wanna do. So that's one really easy way to get started. When you're not sure what you need and you're just trying to get a feel for the lessons and what kinds of things you wanna have, that's where I would start. So those are my biggest tips starting out. Those will help you to reduce the number of props that you need and you'll have access to everything right there. You won't have to kind of be searching for things. You'll have it um, available to you. So aside from digital props and printable props, I do also like to have some 3D props available. So everybody is different. I've seen people that have a whole room full of 3D props and people who are very minimalistic and have very few 3D props 
It's completely up to you, but there are a few that I have found very helpful and that I find that most other teachers tend to use as well. So the very first one that I use is a whiteboard. And I would actually recommend that you have more than one. I have two, but I actually could use even one more. Um, I use them all the time and for different purposes. So I do have one large whiteboard that I use. Um, I use this for some of my rewards that I do. I also, like if I do find a star on the whiteboard, I use this. Um, where I just kind of hide my stars underneath post-it notes and then have some other things underneath. So this is really helpful. I also have a smaller one that's just easier to manage. Um, the bigger one is magnetic, so I can put magnets on there as well. This one is not magnetic, but I use this more for rewards. Like if I do a drawing reward, sometimes I'll do one where I close my eyes and draw a picture and they have to guess what it is. Or if we're doing sound blending and I write the CVC words on here, then that's really helpful. So just to have something smaller that's easy to manage during class. And then just because I have different classes, sometimes I, have, I like to have things written out on some of the whiteboards before class. So that's why I'd recommend having more than one or two. So figure out what works for you. I'd at least get two to start and then kind of go from there and see what you need. My next favorite prop that I use all the time are my magnetic stars. So I got these from Amazon. These are really cool. I use these all the time. So with the younger kids, obviously with both, both VIP Kid and iTutor Group, and I know some of the other online platforms, you can give stars within the classroom and there will actually be like a little animation and a sound when you give it to them. But the younger kids, I still just like to show it to them. And sometimes I'll put it on my whiteboard also so they can see it there. So these are really cool. I use them for other things also, like when I'm teaching um, the words this, that, these, and those, I do this that and then I have two of them for these and those. Um, I also use them to show when two things are the same or different. I have another star. I'll show they're different and these ones are the same. So I use it for that. And like I said, I also use it for find a star. So since I use Google Slides, I usually use Google Slides for my find a star rewards, but back before I used Google Slides and even sometimes now just to change things up, I will use my whiteboard to do find a star. So I use my whiteboard and my magnetic stars. So the student will pick a number, say they pick one, they found a star, and then some of the other numbers will have other things. It just depends. Sometimes I'll have like different food items or I'll have like a question mark and we'll do some kind of a game or something when they choose something like that. So that is another option for the whiteboard and for the magnetic stars. So I will put the link for these down below, but I got them on Amazon. I think they were about six or seven dollars for 10 to 12 of them. So pretty good price and I use them all the time. These are awesome. Okay, so the next prop that I use all the time and it's actually the very first thing that I bought even before I started working with VIP Kid, I got them when I was about to do the interview, are these finger puppets. So these were, I can't remember, maybe not even $20 I think on Amazon. I'll link this below also. But these are really cool because they don't take up a lot of space and they come with all different animals and people. So animals come up all throughout the lessons in both VIP Kid and iTutor. So I use these all the time. I also use them for rewards. So sometimes like I'll have the student pick a an animal and then I hide it. They have to pick a hand and try to find it. If they find it, they get a point. If they don't, I get a point and we do teacher versus student. Um, so it's good for that. It's also good for teaching like boy, girl, or the pronouns he, she, him, her, things like that. Um, there's also an older uh, man and woman. So I use these when we're talking about a grandma and grandpa or teaching the word elderly or things like that. So these just come in really handy. And again, they're small. They don't take up a lot of space and I use them all the time. So I will link that down below as well. But that is one of my most used prop. I use them probably every single day. Another prop I would definitely recommend, especially if you're teaching the younger kids, are flashcards. So these you can get anywhere. You can get them at the dollar store, Target, Amazon. But um, I use these quite often with the younger kids, not really much past level one or two in VIP Kid, but in those early um, lower levels, these are really useful. So you're teaching letters all the time. You're teaching letter sounds. You want them to be able to pair and recognize the big and small letters and be able to um, recognize them. So I use these constantly when I'm teaching the younger kids. I would definitely recommend those. Again, you can get them for a dollar at the dollar store or find some better ones that work for you or you can even make your own. And my next most used prop is Mr. Potato Head. I use this one all the time. So this one's cool because there are always lessons about body parts. So it comes in handy for that reason. I also use it as, an, as a reward um, and it's fun for some of the little kids. They like it when you put the body parts in the wrong places. Some of them find it really fun and funny. So this comes in really handy. Obviously, if you have like another doll or something like that where you can 
point to different body parts. You wouldn't necessarily need this, but I just find it to be fun. And, um, and then you can actually take out each of the body parts and put it in and the kids like it. So this is a good one to have as well. Another prop that I use all the time, but again, especially for the younger kids is my ice cream. This is an awesome one that's also on Amazon and they often do um, a discount on this. So I think I got this for about maybe 10 or $12. I'll link this one below as well. But this one's really cool because you can use it for a lot of different things like teaching colors or reviewing colors for counting. You can count the scoops. It has two different cones. Um, I use it sometimes for a reward where they get a scoop each time they do a good job. So there are lots of different ways you can use this. So you can take it apart. You can take scoops off. You can put them on, it stays together and it's easy to use. And the little kids just love it. They light up when they see this. So all the kids like ice cream. They all can relate to this one. So, so this is a very useful prop to have and one that I use all the time. Another prop that I use a lot but isn't completely necessary, I would say, is toy food. So I have this because I have two little kids so they use this anyway. If I didn't have kids, I probably wouldn't have this just because it's kind of big and clunky and the pieces go everywhere. But I would have some kind of food. You can either get magnetic food or printables, whatever works for you. But I would have some kind of food that you can hold up, at least for the younger kids, because it is helpful to have, um, have something as a reference for them to see. So I do like it. This one is, was really cheap and it has like everything you could possibly want. It has bread, pizza, vegetables, all different kinds of fruit, donuts. So this one I think I got at Walmart or Target, but this one was pretty cheap too for a lot of different food items in there and it's really helpful. But again, use whatever you can or whatever you have. Again, magnetic or printables would take up less space. So do what works for you. But definitely some kind of food is a good prop to have. And the last prop that I would recommend having, again, especially for the younger kids, is some kind of a microphone. So if you have a microphone, it's just a good way to show them like when you're speaking and then to let them know when it's their turn to speak. Some of the brand new students that are just starting out and they don't really, they can't really understand very much at all if anything that you're saying, they really need visuals to understand when you're speaking. They might not even know when you're asking a question. So having a microphone just kind of clues them in. Like if I'm talking into it, they know it's my turn. If I hold it out, then they know it's their turn to speak. So it just kind of reinforces if you want them to repeat something, it just makes it more clear to them. Another thing that you can do is use a puppet. So some people like to talk to the puppet and have them talk and then use the microphone to let the student know. Like, so you demonstrate with the puppet having a conversation and then hold the microphone out for the student when it's their turn so that they can kind of see what you what to expect and then they do it themselves. So it doesn't have to be this one. This is Moana. Again, I have a lot of these things because I have two little kids. My daughter loves Moana, but they have other kinds. I've seen people even make their own. So again, do what works for you, but a microphone is definitely a good prop to have. So those are my top props and the ones that I use most often. And as you'll notice, most of them are geared more towards the younger kids. I definitely use more props with the younger kids. And as they get older, I use less and less props. And if anything, more digital props, if anything at all. So they tend to need less fit as they go on. But in the beginning, it is really important for the younger kids that are just starting out. It keeps them more engaged. And it also just gives them a visual reference so to make sure that they know what you're talking about. I do have a couple of other quick little bonus props that I use and these are more for rewards. So if you do wanna check out um, my other videos that I have about rewards, I have one that is for younger students and one for older students. So I'll link those. Um, but one of the rewards that I really like to use with the younger kids are these grow capsules. So these are really fun and you can get these anywhere. You can get them online, you can get them at the supermarket even. But um, these are really cool when you are teaching like about a certain topic, like this one is all about vehicles. They have ones that are farm animals. So what I do is I just um, let them pick a color and then I have some water, I drop it in there and then we come back the next time they do a great job. We pull it out and see what it is. Then they pick another color for the next reward and then we see what it is again and they love it. They really love it. They love to see what it is and what comes out. They get a big kick out of it. So that's a fun one. Another one you may have seen on social media, a lot of people were talking about this fun little thing. So if you are a minimalist, obviously this is not for you. I sort of am a minimalist, but I'm also a sucker. So I saw this online and I had to have it. So it's basically like Plinko and I use this sort of as a game, like a teacher versus student game. So there are different colors um, of these chips. So I let them pick a color, either purple or green. And then I drop it just like in Plinko. And I see this one got five points. So if that was them, they would get five points. 
then I would drop mine and see how many points I get and we just keep track and see who gets more. I've seen other teachers do different things where it's not teacher versus student. They actually change this all out and cover it out and some of them are like a star or two stars or different things that they can earn down here. So it's totally up to you, but it is kind of fun. So this is another one you can get on Amazon. I'll link that also in case you are interested. But those are just some fun ideas and hopefully this will help. Again, I would start small, just get the things you think you absolutely need first and go from there. The more you teach, the more you'll see like what you feel like you were missing or what, what would have been helpful to have. So just keep these in mind and see what works for you and go from there. If you have any other ideas or comments, please leave them below. And if this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below so you don't miss my future and upcoming videos all about VIP Kid, uh, iTutor Group, and OutSchool. So thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.